because of the expertise I had on the in vivo side, it was decided that I would actually take on developing the ferret model to look at uh, how cisplatin induced emesis in the animals. And I will say at this point that although there's so much controversy, controversy over here, sorry, <laughs> in use of animal models, that there is absolutely no way this work could have gone forward without the animal models. And the importance of it is that the compounds that were ultimately found and developed were very, very effective and have helped a lot of people. But it could not have happened without animal models. And everything was regulated very heavily anyway back then by the Home Office and still is with the use of animal models. But that's how we got started into it, uh, looking at the cisplatin in the ferret model, and then from there we moved forward. So we were pretty much given the task of developing emesis models in the ferret. And again, this is one of the real advantages that we had because we were able to take the ferret and produce a model that very closely mimicked the clinical situation. This is something that does not happen often, you know, in pharmacological research. It's not an easy thing to do, but we were quite lucky with that. And the first thing we did was look at cisplatin. And again, the cisplatin, absolutely horrendous side effects in humans. And we got into that and we looked at metoclopramide, and metoclopramide actually worked. And we knew it probably would. We looked at another compound, renzapride, and it also worked. We looked at further compounds, which were called dopamine antagonists, which were being very much pushed at the time in humans to treat the nausea and vomiting, but were not probably very effective and they didn't work at all in the ferret. In fact, they made things worse, if anything. So we were sitting there with a situation where we had metoclopramide work, renzapride work, in, again, cisplatin. And additionally, at that point, we decided, well, we had also better start looking at some other emetic stimuli. And I developed a model which uh, took cyclophosphamide and doxorubicin together, which again are very potent anti-cancer uh, compounds, uh, and use that to produce emesis in the ferret when dosed uh, together. And the emetic response was quite profound and very similar to the cisplatin. And then we s developed a third model, which was the radiation model, where we also looked at irradiating the animals and producing emesis, and the, the response with that. Now, right about that time, working with Gareth Sanger, Gareth started becoming very interested in this work. He had been working on metoclopramide and given the remit effectively to understand how metoclopramide worked, because we're looking for gastric motility stimulants. Well, Gareth knew metoclopramide pretty well. He made some pretty profound discoveries. He kind of looked at our work that we were doing. He, was, he wasn't directly involved right in the thing at the time, but he was looking at the work, and Gareth looked, and he saw that metoclopramide worked in the models against the cisplatin-induced vomiting. It worked pretty good. He saw the renzapride worked. Not bad. Not quite as good as metoclopramide. And he saw that the domperidone and the dopamine antagonist didn't work. And at that point, you know, the, it's called a eureka moment, I'm sure, you know, and it's, it's down to Gareth. He made this quantum leap, absolute quantum leap, and put it all together and said, look, the antiemetic effects of these compounds are coming from 5-HT-M receptor antagonism. So Gareth uh, just quantum leap, absolute quantum leap, uh, made this connection and said, look, it's a 5-HTM receptor antagonism. This is where the antiemetic activity of these compounds are coming up. And nobody had ever come up with that before. So he, Gareth actually knew John Fossard very well, who was working with Marion Merrill Dow at the time. 
And Marion Merrill Dow had a compound, MDL7222. <laughs> and Gareth got in touch with John Posit and just asked John, could you give us some of this compound? Which, it was a pure 5-HD-M receptor, 5-HD-3 receptor antagonist. Didn't have any other activities at all. If John had not given us the compound, we could have spent months and months making our own compound. Uh, and that would have just set everything back. But, you know, it was really nice back then. Back in the old days, people kind of worked together, even from different companies. So John sent us up the compound. Gareth got a hold of it, and he gave it to me. And previously, I had set up the ferrets. We had had them all set. I think we had four animals getting ready to be tested. And I took the compound, and... I think I mentioned it before, but the thing is, if you give a ferret cisplatin, as with people, there's no question, they will vomit. 100%. Just no question about it. And I took the compound, the MDL72222, and gave it to the ferrets, and they just, it was like they never even got the cisplatin. It's just a complete response. It was quite amazing. And I was, the... They wouldn't let me work in the main animal house because nobody liked ferrets. Right? <laughs> They're kind of smelly little beasts. They're not really, but they the kind of smelly little beasts. And so they used to make me work in this little back lab. And I was back there on my own, and I'd done the experiments, and coming up to the end of the observation period, and I still remember to this day, Gareth coming around to this little back lab, you know, I think it was a rainy little night or something, kind of poking his head around the door, looking at me and go, did it work? <laughs> yeah, it worked, Gareth. <laughs> I said, yeah, it really worked. It really did work well. And that was, you know, everything moved forward from that quite quickly.